Um, if anything, Tanzania is often accorded, often by the donors, praise for what it has achieved in education. The, uh, last year in New York at the Wild of Astoria, Tanzania received a big award for having achieved its MDG on education before time. Um, but look at what's going on in education. Let me just give you three facts. The first is, if you look at the money we are spending in education, it's gone up. We have a threefold increase in the last 10 years in terms of money. This is both donor support as well as government's own revenues. So we do have plenty of money now being spent in education, and many of us activists in some ways have succeeded in making the case for education. About one out of every five dollars the government spends goes to education. But what does it do? Well first, a really important aspect of the education reforms was to get the money to schools, the capitation grant. It was a very modest amount, $10 per child per year. That's all, just $10 per child per year. That's less than $1 per month per child. That was supposed to reach primary schools. When the reform started, there was a study two years later in 2004 of PETS that showed only six of the $10 was getting to the schools. And there was an outcry. Why only six out of the $10 is getting to the schools? And there was lots of promises from government, we want to make sure everything works right, lots of technical support, lots of this, that and the other. Five years later, that's what it took to do another study, because there was a lot of resistance on the part of government and also some donors. Well, what did the 2009 study show? At the same time at which the money for the education sector has gone up, that only $4 out of the 10 was reaching the school. So now, things are getting worse, and instead of perhaps more money getting to the school, less than $4 per child per year was getting to the schools. That means if there's a school with 500 children, you telling the head teacher, run this school with $2,000 for your whole school. And that's all you have. It's a joke. Well, you could say well, that's because the money is going to secondary. It isn't. In fact, the situation in the evidence shows that in secondary education, the capitation grant is even worse. To give you one example, the government and the World Bank in their agreement had agreed to disperse 10,000 shillings in January 2011. We did a SNAP survey in 50 schools, 14 regions, together with Haki Elimu in the Policy Forum, and we found that in those 50 schools, 93% of them had received nothing, and the few schools that had received money had received on average 500 shillings. 500 shillings in today's day and age. Tell me if that's not a joke. So the money is not reaching the schools. Well, what about the teachers? Because everybody would argue that teachers are the most important thing. Um, we have lots of teachers. We've expanded the number of teachers. But the question is, are they teaching? It's a recent study, I don't think it's been formally published yet, done by the World Bank and others, APHRC, which looked very carefully at how much time teachers are doing being school and teaching. But what you find, that in rural areas, teachers are on average teaching two hours and four minutes a day. That's it. Not eight hours, but two hours and four minutes a day. In urban areas where you could say it might be better because of distance, well, in urban areas we find, they find, that teachers are teaching for one hour and 24 minutes a day. So here we have potentially the largest rent-seeking example in Tanzania, that you have close to 200,000 teachers who are teaching for perhaps a quarter of the time that they should be teaching, maybe a third, if you, if you count in preparation time, and they're getting paid their salaries. And yet they are absent on duty three quarters of the time or two thirds of the time. We haven't even talked about the quality of teaching, the pedagogy and the effectiveness. Finally, what really matters is learning outcomes. Uh, we know from the Ueso data uh, that has been done at a very, very large scale across the country, that in fact children are not learning. Uh, a standard two level test was administered to all children aged five to 16. And because it's a standard two test, well then at the standard three level, everybody should have got 100% on it. What do we find? We find that in Kiswahili, the subject that Tanzanians know best, seven out of 10 in standard three were not able to do the standard two test. Eight out of 10 were not able to do the mathematics and nine out of 10 were not able to do the English test. 90% of the children were not able to do the level of English that they were supposed to do. You could say, well, perhaps there's a lag effect, they all catch up. 
for if you take the standard seven children, for example, with the English test, you find that half of them, even after they complete standard seven, are not able to do the standard two level test. So you complete primary school, you're going into secondary school that is taught in English, and yet you cannot do the standard two level test, which is being able to read sentences like, this is a cat. And you expect somebody who can't do that to be able to thrive in secondary. It also is a joke. You could say for the Form 4 results, finally, well, at the same time in which the money has been going up, let's look at what's happening to the results. These are the Form 4 10th grade results overall. You can see that there was a slight increase and now a decrease. In the last Form 4 results, which were released a few months ago at the end of 2010, what you find is that something like 90% of the children who set those exams were not able to get Division 1, 2 or 3. In other words, they got a D or an F. They do not have the competence. So here we have an education system supported, among others, by general budget support that is simply failing catastrophically failing to educate our children. And yet, billions of dollars go into education every year of both government and GBS resources.